guys and welcome back to my channel. Recently I put out a video about my new pet deer and one of the questions that I got asked in that video was if I was going to be treating the deer with topical dog medications for ticks. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. To answer the question, first of all, absolutely not. The medications meant for dogs should never be used on other types of animals. The medication should only be used on the animals that they're meant for. And secondly, those medications should not be used on dogs. So today in this video, I'm going to explain to you what they are, how they work, and some information that you might not know about using them that could be really harmful to your pet. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos about animals, and you can also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. Fleas and ticks are horribly disgusting and awful for your dog and it's totally normal to be disgusted when finding them on your dog and it's really important to prevent them from getting on your dog and that's really important for their health and your health but it's also really important to understand that these are very common and it really depends on your situation. An apartment dog owner is not going to have the same difficulties in this situation that say an owner who lives in the country does or somebody who takes their dog out on nature hikes. But as a dog owner, it is something that you're going to have to deal with. And I've seen a lot of people overreact when they don't need to. The common way of taking care of this problem is through medications, chewables, sprays, and shampoos. Some of these products can be bought from the vet and some of the same products can actually be bought over the counter. All of these medications are promoted as being safe for your pets, but the truth is not nearly as simple as that. In 2008, there was actually 44,000 different cases of adverse reactions to the medications in dogs, and there was actually over 600 deaths. Now, this isn't unusual. There are a couple hundred deaths every year because of these medications. So no, they're not 100% safe for your dog. And these reactions were not anything unusual and the products were not taken off of the shelf because there was something harmful in them. It's something that happens and they're still left for people to buy. Now there is gonna be a lot of really important information in this video, so you can check the description down below for links to the science journals and other type of evidence for this information. Topical flea and tick medications are a liquid that you put on the back of your dog and then that kills fleas and ticks for about 30 days. That's about how long it works. Fipperil is the product that is used in this treatment and it is a toxin that is used as an insecticide because it can kill them through contact or ingestion. Studies suggest that Fipperil is more toxic to insects than mammals, but that is not to say that it is safe for mammals because it certainly is not. In studies done with Fipperil, it was shown to also be toxic to animals, causing mice to have seizures, involuntary muscle spasms, and head twitching. It's also seen to cause overactivity and irritability and causing liver and thyroid and kidney damage. And the makers of these type of products, these topicals that go on dogs, do actually ask for customers to not have any contact with the medication and to make sure you don't get it on your skin. And brands like Frontline will actually have instructions, uh, first aid instructions for people if they get it on their skin. And there are bans on fipronil usages in agriculture in the United States and in different European countries. So you really have to ask yourself, is this something that you're comfortable putting on your dogs? Now the next subject I want to talk about is Lyme disease. And Lyme disease is a very common illness in the United States and it's something that can affect us and affect our dogs. Lyme disease can be transferred to us and to our dogs when an infected tick bites us. And some of the symptoms for this are going to be headaches, fatigue, and fevers. The infection can also spread into the joints, the heart, and the nervous system. But one of the most important things to understand is that the tick has to be attached to your skin for 36 hours in order to give you Lyme disease. So let me say that again. A tick bite will not give you Lyme disease. 
the tick actually has to be attached to you for over a day in order to transfer the disease to you. So I want you to keep that number in mind, 36 hours. 36 hours have to pass before the disease can spread to you. Not before that, and then after that is when there's an issue. So how long does Frontline take to work? Frontline actually takes 48 hours to kill the tick that it comes in contact with. 48 hours. That is after Lyme disease is able to be transferred to you. So Lyme disease can be transferred into the body before the tick medication kills the tick. Now it is important to mention that Frontline and other brands say that the tick does not need to bite the dog to get killed. Coming in contact with fipronil on the dog's hair will kill it in 48 hours. But if the tick is on your dog's hair, it's because it is looking for a place to attach and feed. So it is still not enough time. So in conclusion, putting frontline or other topicals on your dog is not a way to stop Lyme disease. Now it does prevent ticks from repopulating, from you know, reproducing and infesting, and it's gonna cut down on ticks by killing them. But it does not protect you from Lyme disease. So at this point, I hope you understand that I do not recommend topicals like Frontline or really other types of medications meant to kill ticks. However, I do want to point out to people watching this video that if you are going to do it and you're going to go ahead and put that on your dog anyway, do please buy something like Frontline. Now that is going to be one of the best brands out there uh, because the other brands do have more side effects and affect dogs more often. So if you're going to get something, please don't go with something cheaper than Frontline. Make sure you are going to spend the money because it will lower your risk a little bit. Um, but again, that's not something I recommend. Using these products does put your dog at risk and there's mild side effects that are very, very common, which is gonna be skin irritation, uh, redness, itching, chemical burn, hair loss. But then there's also going to be some of the other side effects that are a lot more serious and that is seizures, convulsion, and that leads to death. And it's not uncommon and it does happen often. And even for the dogs who are not so affected right away, what are you putting them through? Using these types of medications on a regular basis, you are putting a lot of stress on the kidneys and liver, and it's going to cause long-term damage. So even if you aren't seeing adverse effects right away, in the long run, these are harmful to pets. And it really makes you wonder, after seeing these studies, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of effects are this are these medications having on dogs behavior what we see in mice is that they are irritable and their behavior changes so the question is is the aggression uh, hyperness and other behavioral problems seen in dogs is this a result of medications that they're getting because that's what we've seen in mice and for those wondering about deer and Lyme disease I know there was concern that my deer are gonna give me Lyme disease deer are actually a dead-end host for ticks deer do not transfer Lyme disease to ticks and when bitten by a tick carrying Lyme disease they actually don't get the disease ticks usually pick up Lyme disease from rodents like mice and other animals but deer actually don't become infected thank you guys for watching i hope this is educational for you and please let me know down below what you thought but before i let you go i do have a word from our sponsor if you're looking for better ways to care for your dog a huge consideration is diet and more people are moving to raw feeding and as more people start moving to raw feeding some still encounter issues doesn't matter how good the quality of your dog's food is if they're allergic to the ingredients and that is where five strand allergy comes in this is a test for dogs, cats, horses, and humans to find out what your food intolerances are. It's easy and affordable, and they will help you make sure that your dog feels great after each meal. This will stop grass eating, vomiting, and licking of the paws. So check it out at the link below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!